I want to go over some quick anatomy of your chest because I think that seeing this will help you during our, during our chest exercises. So your chest attaches as a whole from your sternum, it runs onto your clavicle, and then it attaches here onto your arm. So if you notice the line of pull from your chest is kind of at an angle. So it's not, it's not straight this way, it runs this way. This is where your chest runs. And this is important because your chest acts to bring your arm in towards midline. So when you're doing a dumbbell press, what you'll commonly see, what somebody does, is when they press, they press the weight straight up. So they'll press just like they're going towards the ceiling, as opposed to bringing the dumbbell up and in or up and together. This motion of not only going upward, but also going in towards midline. So squeezing your chest like you're doing this, like you're bringing your arm in towards the center. That's, that's where the magic's at. That's, that's how to activate your chest the most, whether you're doing a fly, whether you're doing a press, it's not simply moving linearly, it's moving towards midline. And I'm gonna to continue to reinforce that during our chest exercises, because that's how you're gonna get the most benefit. The other thing I wanna show you is how the angle of the rib cage impacts your chest. So this guy, he's got a relatively flat chest. So he's not, I have a broader chest. So for me, the angle of my rib cage pushes the fibers away from my joint axis. So the higher the angle of your rib cage is this way, envision it taking your muscle further away from the joint. The flatter you are, look at this band. See the flatter you are towards here, the less away from the joint this band is. If I take, if somebody has a big broad chest, this thing goes away from the joint axis and this increases the mechanical advantage of your chest. Well, how does this apply to different angles of the bench position? What this means is that one way you can accommodate for this mechanical advantage thing is if I decline this and relative to his arm, his chest just got bigger because I declined the bench and that brought his rib cage higher. And that elevation of his rib cage takes the fibers of his chest away from the joint and that increases the mechanical advantage of his chest fibers. So a declined position theoretically activates the chest the most due to it increasing the mechanical advantage of his chest muscles um, by changing the angle of the rib cage relative to the arm. The more inclined I go, the less the mechanical advantage is for the chest. So decline, the most activation, and then for every incline that I go beyond a decline, there's less chest activation. So a decline press has the most mechanical advantage for your chest. And then as you incline that bench, there gets less and less chest, more and more shoulder, up to about 30 degrees being in the sweet spot. So we're gonna change all these positions. At the end of the day, all this means, don't get too fixated on this. I'm just, I'm basically telling you why manipulating angles changes how the chest contracts. Because I don't want you to think that we randomly change things. I want you to know why we change things. This way, when you're on your own, you can make decisions and know how to make these decisions because this is all anatomy based. That's what exercise is. Biomechanics is, is based on your body and manipulating how your muscles um, contract relative to your joint positions. So we will change declines, inclines, flies, non-flies, how your triceps are involved in a chest press or if they're not involved in a chest press. These are all variables we're gonna change throughout this program and I'm excited to present these as we go through different exercises a little bit more specifically.